Hello and welcome to TSG Foundation's Wisdom of the Zodiac. Today's summary is going to be taken from Wisdom of the Zodiac, Volume 3, Chapter 39, titled Sagittarius, Building the Vision. This is a very important and beautiful topic. It is all about how to have a vision in our life and stay focused on that vision and why it is important to have a vision. So I will start by reading from page 433, that first paragraph, that's, that's the keynote for us. So it reads as follows. The energy of Sagittarius calls forth great striving from the human heart to go and contact the cosmic magnet, which is calling us back to our perfection. That is such a beautiful topic, the idea of a cosmic magnet. Torquem wrote three volumes on cosmic questions, and the second volume is titled Cosmic Magnet, and that series will be out in a few weeks, so I hope you take a look at it. So Cosmic Magnet is that central force in the universe that compels every living being to strive toward perfection, to strive to be the essential person or the essential being that they are. So think of that maybe as a story, as a myth, but something pulls you, something compels you day in and day out, year after year, to strive and to better yourself and to find the things in life that are the most important for you. So the cosmic magnet is pulling us toward it. And what happens when that happens? Age after age, the cosmic magnet releases a powerful energy, calling back the sparks that are spread in space. That's us. We are sparks lost in space, and we're trying to make it home. Think of all the children's stories or the parables in great wisdom teachings that tell about the person who was lost and then they were found, the prodigal son story and so on. Those are quintessential archetypal stories about a lost spark that is going home. Lost in what? Matter, emotions, and mind. Age after age, the fiery message and the fiery energies are released to call the sparks back home. So at this time of the year, you are called to go back home. So you're going to find out what that means for you and how you are going to get there. As the sparks try to go back home, they improve their lives. So when you are trying to go back to your essence, to who you are, you are going to try to improve your life and you start with material things. And you try to find, for example, a better home, better clothing, better health, and better things for your family. And those are material things that are very, very important and essential. But when all is said and done and you have all the material things that you need and you're satisfied, you find that there's something gnawing at your heart and your mind. Something in you is not satisfied. So what do you look for? You try to become more beautiful. You go into subjective things to look for and to become to become more beautiful, more joyful, more enthusiastic, more glorious, more creative. So you can see that from the material things, objective things that we strive toward that are natural and important for human beings, we go into the subjective realms and we search for those things, don't we not? We search for something that makes us joyful and happy and abundant in every way, not just money and a home and clothing. So this path calling the sparks back home, this path that calls us to go beyond the material things, okay, that's the second stage, beyond the material things, is called the path of striving. So keep this in your mind. It is called the path of striving. Sagittarius is a symbol of striving. So at this time of the year, if you feel a pull that is compelling you to strive to become a different person or a more creative and a new person, this is the energy that's compelling you to do that. Sagittarius is represented by a person sitting on a white horse and holding an arrow in his hand. So that is the arrow that you're going to let loose exactly toward your vision. And eventually, as a disciple, as an initiate, you are going to be the arrow itself. It's a beautiful image that you should keep in your mind. So this process of striving toward perfection path of striving continuously, sacrificing, growing, doesn't just come suddenly. It is in four different stages, and let me go through these stages before. Perhaps I've covered these before, but this is a really important thing for us to remember. The first stage that compels us to move towards something other than what we are right now is desire. You have a desire for many things, 
But desire is not the be-all and end-all. You may wish and desire many, many things, whether they are material things or spiritual things or subjective things. But remember that desire does not end anything in anything but just continuous wishful thinking. And if you can keep in your mind that desire is only the first stage, then you will see how that will unfold into striving and then striving toward perfection. So when we desire, we are focused on the lower three centers in our bodies. Desire for comfort, for survival, for beauty in your life and around you, for freedom, for example, self-expression. And these are things that are natural and normal for everyone. And everybody in the world has this desire. But then eventually, as that cosmic magnet pulls you, something inside you responds to that and you say, I've got to do something about this. And what do you do? You aspire. You aspire toward with your heart and you put your heart into it. You may stay a little bit longer in your disciplines of health, exercise, diet, or trying to become something more of what you truly are. So you put your heart into it and that becomes aspiration. Aspiration involves your heart center. So you can see that from the bottom three, you're moving up and involving your heart center. And that's a little bit more solid than just the initial stage of desire. But from there, we can't stop. We have to move to the next step, which is striving. Striving actually starts involving your head, your decision making, and your brain actually starts become, becoming your central focus, your leadership abilities increase, and so you lead your life towards something that you really want. And you start honing your desires into something that is more accomplished, more you're able to do it, more probable. So you start thinning it down and focusing and focusing. So think of desire as this big package or basket of things that you want. All these things. We can even have desire for spiritual things. I want to be like this, like this, like this, and have a huge basket. But then eventually you have to choose one or two things, don't you? And that's this process. You choose the most essential that is most important for you that you can do right now. And when that's accomplished, then you can expand it. But typically we choose a basket full of things and imagine that if we desire all these things, they are going to happen. Of course they don't. All we do is just spin our wheels around it. Unless you take that desire to striving. So striving focuses with your mind and you start disciplining yourself. Eventually when you see that you are really disciplined, you're accomplishing things that you set out to do, you see that you are truly continuously striving. And that is the goal that we're reaching for is continuous striving toward perfection. You reach one goal, then the next goal, then the next goal. And this is the story of Sagittarius, that lifetime after lifetime, you are aware inside of you that although I cannot do everything, this one point in my life, I will keep these in my mind and I will work toward them one step at a time. So you can see that in order to accomplish your visions and your uh, purpose in life, you have to accomplish them one by one and not just try to do everything all at once, whether it is material or spiritual, the highest achievement that you want. So try to hone it down to something that is the most essential. Now let's go to page 434. In order to make this striving possible, which is what we want, right? A person must have a vision. So this is the second thing you are going to think about. Okay, I want to go from desire all the way through aspiration, striving, and then striving toward perfection. So what do I have to have? A vision. A vision is going to focus you. Without vision, there is no target for the arrow. So if you can visualize that, that you are a person sitting on a horse, you have an arrow, and what do you need? You need a target. And that target can't be just 50 targets. You have to choose one. Okay. Where is your will going to hit? Okay. Striving means to stand somewhere, have a vision, and strive toward that vision. So you can't strive helter-skelter all over the place into 50 different targets. You have to choose a vision. The vision is the distant star which challenges you, life after life, to go and join with it. So if you can keep your mind, in your mind, 
that that cosmic magnet is pulling you toward a vision and you're going to hone your skills, your ideas, you're striving toward that one vision. Okay? Do you have a vision? This is the question that Torquem asks in this beautiful chapter. Then what is it? So you're going to take your time and write out your vision. A real vision is always expanding. So you can have your mind, your one vision is going to expand, but you're not going to have 50 different visions in front of you. It is that one vision that's going to expand, and that's how you're going to work toward it. Your vision is the vision you, we ha you have first for yourself. So you're going to say, what is my vision for myself? What is the vision for my physical body, my emotions, my mind, my spiritual life? What is that vision that I can really target in my life? Then from there, you're going to say, what is the vision then for my family, for my friends? Take it to your group, to your spiritual group. Have a vision for your group. And then why not blend that with something in your mind that says, this is really the vision for humanity. It's not just your opinion. It is a vision that would be the good for everyone on the planet. For example, everyone in the planet have a vision to feed them, to clothe them, to have shelter and education for them. That is one of the visions. So you are going to have your physical, emotional, mental, personal, family, and even humanity vision. Okay? Striving is so important. But in order to have striving, you must have a vision. And that is exactly the keynote for this chapter. Your vision helps you economize your time. That is so true. When you have a vision, you say, is this important? Do I really need to do this? Do I need to read that? Do I need to go on the internet again? So these are questions that you are internally checking in with yourself and determining if you are really still on target or you're all over the place. So you're going to polarize yourself like an arrow and hit your target. So you know when Torquem writes, he writes very directly and he says it like it is. He doesn't mess around with words and he says it exactly. There's you, there's your arrow, there's your target. Now work toward that target. Now, what is the next thing after you have a vision? Look on page 435. Do read this chapter several times during this full moon period. It is so beautiful. So in the middle of the page, let me read 435. Once you have a vision, what is it that you need next? You need a second factor, which is discipline. People are afraid of that word discipline. I don't know why. People start a meditation course after a month, it's gone, they give up, they don't want to face the issues that come out from inside of them. Well, you have to have the discipline. Without discipline to face yourself, to clean up your house, you're not going to reach your vision. It is just like when you clean your closet, your house, your furniture, change your beds. Something has to be moved out. You have to face the dirt in order to have a clean outcome. So, let me tell you, don't give up. Have discipline in your life and stick with it. No one can be successful of anything in the world if he does not discipline himself. Life with all its troubles and challenges is nothing else but a school of discipline. Did you consider that, that your life is actually a school of discipline? Disciplining everything in your life and don't shy away from discipline. I see this in all the years that I've worked with people and I've served in this capacity in TSG. I see it's sad to see that people have so much desire to be something. We all have that. But they don't want to take that next step and the next step. Well, try and try again. Don't give up. And discipline, what is it? Let me read this beautiful definition. I'm going to read it very slow, slowly, so you can understand. Discipline is making every effort, every effort, to reach a state of compassion and tension. It's a tense awareness. It's a tense observation that you are really on target. You are really looking at that target. That will not be distorted or disturbed. Okay, you are going to keep that vision, that target in your mind, and it's not going to be disturbed when you enter a higher voltage of energies and currents. See, let me tell you something, for example. We have joint healing classes, abundance classes, and various meditation classes. People start out all happy and gung-ho. After they have a few troubles, and their voltage increases, and they are in the different energies of cleaning up their life and facing themselves, they give up. They give up. They don't have the discipline. So I'm telling you here that 
you have to have that state of tension and that state of compression okay compression and tension that will not be distorted when you are entering those higher currents entering into the currents of spiritual life is not just happy clappy manby pamby as i say it's not just singing psalms and being happy about everything it is hard work it requires discipline so you're going to take that into account and those who make the effort to discipline themselves and come back over and over if you give up come back again try again and i see a great change inside of them after three four five months a huge change comes over them and they can see how life really opens new doors for them i've experienced this in my life and i have seen it in the lives of countless other people now what is the next factor the third factor in reaching our vision it's page 436 turn to page 436 and let me talk about that third factor that is really really important it is to study the law of synthesis why is that important let me read a little bit the law of synthesis means that the great musician of the universe the cosmic magnet is composing a symphony in which you are taking your part okay whatever you must do be harmonious with that symphony okay so what does that tell you that tells you that the target that you focus on must be harmonious with everything in your life and if you find that you are uncomfortable with that target it isn't really what you want then change it regroup and reposition your target so that everything that you do should fit into your vision for yourself for your family and for humanity sometimes what i see people doing is they want everybody in the world to change but they are not willing to take the steps to make those very changes in their life and so remember if you want the world to change around you you have to take the first step and that involves these steps have a vision and you're going to strive okay strive and discipline yourself number three see how that fits into the larger scheme of life so that you are working in context of life you are current with life so this is a really beautiful topic and go to page 438 bottom of 437 to 438 it is really beautiful once you start striving toward your vision you will be immune from the levels of contagious elements physical contagions emotional contagions mental contagions and spiritual contagions i don't have to tell you what those mean i think you can think about it and not be swept up by the contagions of life around you if you have immunity to certain things building a strong spiritual immune system physical immune system emotional and mental that holistic immune system it means that in past centuries you were a person of striving so continue to strive and build that inner immunity that will take you through the earthquakes of life the crises of life and you will be able to go toward that straight vision straight goal straight ideal that you want in your life from now on think about your vision so this is what is the topic for Sagittarius create a vision and see how you can strive toward it do you have a beautiful vision then it's time to write it down what do I want for myself And if you really don't want, know and that is a factor for many people then break it down into pieces say what is my vision for myself for my physical body and then how do I get there just make an outline don't say I'm going to have physical emotional mental and spiritual all this year do one thing and stick with that one thing when it's accomplished to more than 50 percent you will see that you will naturally move toward the next level of your vision which would be emotional get that accomplished more than 50 percent then you'll see that you will naturally evolve toward the mental and so on and by the way when you are striving toward your physical emotional and mental visions that is in itself part of your spiritual vision so don't separate them they are one whole and that is what is meant by the law of synthesis that you are bringing everything that you do into that one whole after you start disciplining your life think about where how and in what conditions 
you can live so that you bloom and increase the harmony of the symphony of the universe. Now that is a quintessential Tarkum vision and philosophy that he imparts. He always says, it's not just about you, but it starts with you. It starts with you and then have always in your mind that what I'm doing affects people around me, affects life around me, and affects the universe. So it starts with me and I am in context of the whole universe. Okay, so that is the message for this beautiful Sagittarius, the sun in Sagittarius, or sometimes called the full moon of Sagittarius because the moon is full. But that is not what we are celebrating as I have talked about often in this program. So be a value in the universe. Okay, this is that last sentence. Be a value in the universe. Increase your value. What does that mean for you? Increase your beauty, your gifts, your abundance, be valuable and then give that, give that to everyone around you. A note in the symphony of the great musician of the universe. Isn't that beautiful? That you think of yourself as somebody of value, of depth, of beauty, and that you are part of the whole universe, that you are giving to the symphony of the universe. Isn't that a beautiful thought that you are a note in the symphony? Okay, let us do this beautiful meditation on pages 438, 439, 440. I will walk us through it. I will guide you. And let me just tell you briefly, we will close our eyes and relax and say three ohms. And with each ohm, we relax each of our bodies. And then I will go through a visualization and repeat after me a beautiful mantra and so on. So I will guide us. So stay with me, stay focused and leave all your troubles outside. Think of yourself as this beautiful man or woman, and you are about to let that focus of your life, that arrow, which is the focus, to go exactly toward your vision. And you're going to focus on that and see where that's going to take you. So sit up straight and have a nice smile on your face and close your eyes and just focus and relax. And we are going to sound three ohms silently or out loud if you like. And with each ohm, bring the magnetic fire to your physical body first, emotional body, mental body, creating purification in each body. So take a deep breath. First ohm, bring the fire to clear and clean your physical body. Deep breath and emotional body. Deep breath, ohm with the mental body clearing. Visualize that you are a flame in the aura of a rainbow. Just visualize a rainbow and see how you are a flame in that rainbow. Keep your smile and stay relaxed, but stay very focused and alert. You are standing in the center of the rainbow. Keep focusing on the rainbow and you as a flame and repeat after me the prayer to Shambhala. Thou who called me to the path of labor, accept my ableness and my desire. Accept my labor, O Lord. Because by day and by night thou beholdest me. Manifest thy hand, O Lord. 
because great is darkness. I follow thee. I follow thee. I follow thee. Meditate on the seed thought. What is my vision for the new year? And focus briefly on your vision for your physical body, then emotional, then mental, and then what is your spiritual vision, the long-term vision that you hold for yourself. And as you do this meditation, think of the arrow in your hand and think of that vision that you're going to target. And take your time and focus. State each one as if you are affirming it in your life. Let us say the great invocation together. Visualize thousands and millions of people all over the world who desire the light, the love, and the purpose of the divinity in their lives. And as you say the great invocation, increase the light, the love, and the divine purpose. And see if you can increase that all over the world especially places in the world that are really suffering now. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on earth. Visualize light increasing. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of men, the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center, which we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light stream forth, and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. Thank you for joining me. It's always a pleasure to bring these beautiful teachings to you. And I appreciate your participation and your loving and dedicated study of these teachings. 
I would like to take a few minutes now to talk to you about the vision that we have here for TSG, Torcom's vision for humanity. At the end of each year, I write a summary of what we have done this year and what our visions are for the new year. And I have written a summary for 2014 and we have posted that online for you. As you know, our vision is very, very simple and it is very much in line with Torcom's vision. Let me tell you a little bit about that vision. Torcom dreamed about doing two things. First, to write the most beautiful ageless wisdom teachings that he could think about, and meditate on, and bring together from many, many disciplines. And you know he did this, and he wrote over 150 books, hundreds of lectures and seminars he gave in order to educate people just like you and me, and make it available for everyone in the world. And we are dedicated to that vision. We have been doing this for 27 years and will continue to do this until all those books are finished. The second part of that first vision is to make sure that there are ways to use these beautiful materials, what I call the process, so that he created meditation courses and study courses so that people can utilize these books and these beautiful lectures to transform their lives. And we took all those meditations, we have expanded them, created more coursework and curriculum, and you can look at what we offer in our TSG University part of our website. Now the second part of his vision was to create a permanent home where people can come and meditate, study, and enjoy our library and our research facilities, and they can transform themselves in a beautiful setting. And we are almost going to start to do that. So I wrote about these things and Please read them online or print a copy for yourself or email us or call us and we will send you a printed copy. It is really part of my vision for my life and for TSG to help make Torcom's visions come true. And we are almost there. Within a three to five year period, with your help, we can print all the books and have them all in circulation. And that's our goal. That is my personal and our group goal is to make them available. And we are going to start next year on finding ways and means and collecting funds so that we can have a permanent home for TSG. And so I'm asking you at this time to donate and contribute financially to TSG in any way that you can. Make this part of your end of the year giving or throughout the year, whatever works for you. You know, I am so fortunate to enjoy so many things in my life. And I know that whatever I receive, I have to give back something to the world and to other people. So I ask you today that when you consider all the gifts that blessings that you enjoy in your life, that you also share part of your blessings with TSG and with the work that we are doing. So please take a look at all the materials that we have online that tells you about what we have done this year, what our visions are for the new year, and how you can help. And please help us any way that you can Make a donation to TSG and to any part of our programs that you like and you are called to help with. And we really appreciate everything that we receive from everybody around the world. And we are doing so many wonderful things. We just sent hundreds of books to our friends to India because all of you responded to that call. And we are going to have other programs to send other books free of charge to people in the world the groups who are striving. So if you want to help us make our vision come true within a short period of time where we'll be able to do that, then please help us financially contribute to TSG. So thank you for being with us and have a wonderful Christmas. Any celebration that you celebrate during this season, happy holidays and happy new year. And thank you for joining me and I'll see you next time. Thank you.